Hello everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Have you ever wondered what the best way is to get your kids into music? In case you haven't seen any of my videos before, or you just don't know, I actually have four kids, and the youngest is 10. So I've had a lot of time to think about this, and although I really can't tell you the best way to get your kids into music, I can tell you what I did, and what was really fun for me. Sometimes people wonder the age at which kids should start taking like piano lessons. I think five years old is a good age for that. I think it's important to put a kid in front of a piano before then, or a drum, or a xylophone, or, or a recorder, or a harmonica, or, you know, something to make noise with and, and to experiment with. It's important to be able to see that sound can go higher and sound can go lower. Those are things that you can learn before you're five, I think. How do you even know if music lessons are a good thing for your kid, though? How do you know if your kid's going to be any good at it? That's a hard question, but I hope to give you some answers today. One of the first things that I started doing with my kids was just to sing to them. All kinds of songs, all the time. Silly songs, serious songs, bedtime songs, happy songs, all kinds of songs. I sang to them, and I sang with them, and I put on recordings for them. In fact, I had little playlists for my kids uh, for bedtime and for nap time, and they had some of my favorite songs on them. I'm going to make a couple of playlists and put them on my Spotify, so if you go to my Spotify account, you can follow my playlists and then you can see. first playlist I'll have for you is a bedtime playlist, and it'll have all the songs that I really liked for my kids at bedtime. I am not really a fan of, like, little kid music, you know, like, CDs you can find of adults who have made kid songs, like Wheels on the Bus and stuff. I don't like them. I don't know why. They've always just given me the creeps and I didn't want them anywhere near my children. It's okay if you if they don't give you the creeps, but you know, you're watching my video. <laughs> uh, I sang those kind of songs to my kids myself. Maybe you think you can't sing, so so you'd rather just put on a CD. Even if you can't sing those kind of songs like Wheels on the Bus, you can say them. The wheels on the bus go round and round and you do the motions and you teach your kids the motions. I think those are all really, really important things for your child's development. But the songs that I kind of gravitated toward were from old um, Disney movies a lot. I really like uh, the lullabies that you can find in Disney movies like from Mary Poppins and Pete's Dragon. Dumbo, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I really like those old Disney movies. So a lot of the songs on my playlist will be those kind of songs. I also like, I think, I don't think that Sesame Street is silly. I think especially the old Sesame Streets, you can find really nice videos on YouTube and songs on Spotify. Like, um, I'd Like to Visit the Moon that Ernie sang. I think that's a gorgeous song. And uh, somebody come and play, wonderful. And then there's all kinds of, you know, fun songs and silly songs from that too. So I think those are really good. The Rubber Ducky song, are you kidding me? That's just like a jazz classic. So number one, sing to your kids, put on recordings for your kids, make playlists and use them. Now, the second playlist I'm gonna make for you is for a game. I have a couple games that I would play with my kids in the car and we still do it. My 17 year old isn't so crazy about that and sometimes he chooses not to play. Almost all the time he chooses not to play. But the other ones still play and once in a while he likes to win, so. First game, name that genre. You play all different music for your kids. Now the cool thing about being a parent is that you pretty much get to brainwash your kid. You get to indoctrinate them with what you like. So that's cool. So in this kind of list, we're gonna have everything. We're gonna have some 90s grunge. We're gonna have some pop from the 2000s. We're gonna have, you know, country. We're gonna have Southern rock. We're gonna have, we're gonna have, we're gonna have R&B. We're gonna have soul. We're gonna have funk. 
We're gonna have jazz, we're gonna have Dixieland, we're gonna have big band music, all kinds of genres. You might have to learn a little bit yourself to be able to uh, categorize these songs. But you don't, I mean, you don't have to get that in depth with it. Um, you can, but you can play your favorite things from these genres. And so what you do is you turn on a song, you have the kids listen for a little bit, and they have to name the genre. And they'll yell it out. They'll be like, R&B! And, and you'll be like, that's right! And then maybe you put on the Eagles and they just say rock and roll. And you're like, yes, yes it is. It's up to you how detailed you want to get, like if you want to differentiate between rock and roll and grunge or grunge and heavy metal. It's all in your court because maybe you love Metallica so you really want them to differentiate between heavy metal and death metal or something. Yeah, it's up to you. They're your kids. First game, name that genre. Second game, name that band. Name that band is really fun. There's a lot of bands that kind of sound the same as each other, so a sub game in the name that band game is differentiate between bands. So you can play Nirvana and Pearl Jam and have them see if they can if they can tell the difference between those two bands. Now while the Nirvana song is playing, you point out Nirvana's really sparse. It's always got a few chords that repeat, it sounds um, a lot more empty than Pearl Jam, and simple melodies, and you can point out the differences in Kurt Cobain's voice, you can point out that his lyrics rarely make sense, all kinds of things. You could put on like uh, Tom Petty and Bruce Springsteen, kind of compare and contrast, but you have these lessons in your car as you're driving along, or you can have them in your living room or around your dining room table, it's up to you. You're the parent. The next game is Name That Singer. It's close to Name That Band. Uh, but there are a lot of singers that kind of sound like each other. So you can group them up. And again, I'll have a playlist so you can, you can just use it and steal my ideas. But you know, you might want to discuss the difference between Linda Ronstadt, Olivia Newton-John. If you're ultra hip, you might want to discuss the differences between Carmen McRae Sarah Vaughn. Don't forget about classical music. This could be a game in and of itself. It just depends on what your passion is. If you want your kids to be able to tell the difference between Baroque music and Romantic music, good. If you want them to be able to tell the difference between Beethoven and Mozart, good. To identify all the tones in a 12-tone row, more power to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. It's up to you, but name that singer is really good. Maybe you're gonna talk about Barbara Streisand and Judy Garland. I think you should talk about them. Your kids are quick too. They're gonna to remember names. Like my son Miles is better at, I don't know why, he's better at remembering that there's two singers in Fleetwood Mac and he can always tell when it's Lindsey Buckingham or when it's Stevie Nicks and he's like, that's Fleetwood Mac. But it's because I taught him when he was like four years old. Kids are capable of a lot more than you think that they're capable of too just challenge the heck out of them. That's why those silly songs where, you know, if you buy about the, I don't know what they're called, the doodles or the wiggles or something, it's not gonna challenge the kids. It just dumbs music down for them and they're capable of understanding so much more. You could even talk about the difference between, you know, Gene Krupa and Buddy Rich. Those aren't very hard to differentiate between, I don't think. You could discuss uh, big bands. You can see if they can tell the difference between Duke Ellington and Count Basie. Possibilities are endless. The last game is probably my favorite and it's called, What Do You Hear? In this game, you put on any recording that you want and you ask the kids, what do you hear? Now the kids are gonna get better at it as time goes by. I'll tell you what, right at the beginning, they're not even gonna understand that there's such thing as a bass. I mean, and they're gonna have a hard time picking the bass out. You're gonna have to teach them that almost every song has a bass. So this is how it goes. Say you put on, uh, say you put on something by the Steve Miller Band. They're probably gonna be like, singer! This is how it works. They'll go, singer! You'll go, yes, you get a point! And then they'll say, drums, yes, you get a point. You keep track of points if you, if you won't make your kids fight. We're kind of a points family. And, 
And you'll be like, yes, and then they'll say guitar. If you want to get technical, you can say rhythm guitar, lead guitar. But don't let them say lead guitar until there actually is something that, that sounds like lead guitar. And then one of them, a smarty, might be like, keyboard. Yes, keyboard. They're always going to forget bass. You're going to be like, there's one left. You've got one left. And some, some little whippersnapper in the back is going to be like, bass. Yes! They can get two points for the last instrument, like the one that nobody thought of. There's all kinds of opportunities to introduce instruments. Maybe you hear an accordion in something. Maybe you hear an organ. Try to listen to vari a variety of songs so that they kind of get introduced to all kinds of different instruments. They can decide that they like a mandolin when they're five years old because they're listening to Alison Krauss. They can decide that they're going to want to play the mandolin and that's what they grow and they grow. I'm sorry, I don't really want your kids to grow up to be musicians. You're thinking, gosh, Amy, my kids are going to be homeless and suffering. <laughs> They'll be happy. <laughs> anyway, these are my, my games for your kids. As your kids start to do this, you'll kind of notice which ones gravitate toward it. You'll notice which ones have a good time playing these games and which ones are better at it. I think music lessons are for everybody. I think every kid ought to take some lessons on some instrument. But you can kind of, I think these games are a way to help you decide, you know, how much your kids really are going to want to be a part of this. But I really do think that this kind of thing is helpful. It'll help you to get to know your kids better and to share something with them that is important to you. The music that you love. My last idea for you is that if you'd like, I can spend a little time with your kid. You can email me, amynolte at yahoo.com, and we can just set up like a 15 minute Skype session where I can sit down with them and have them sing some pitches, have them uh, sing some notes back to me. If they're, if they're familiar with, a, with an instrument, I can listen to them a little bit. We can just have like a fun little talk about music. And then I can try to help you to know how to direct your kids. That's, uh, that's something I'd totally be willing to do. So um, yeah, contact me if, you'd, if, if you think that sounds good to you. Or just take them to somebody you know who's musical. Never, you wouldn't want to tell them that they're being assessed or anything. Just that they're going to be playing games for a little bit. This is a music game. We're gonna we're gonna call this nice person and play a music game. I don't know how you're gonna put it, but that's all it would be anyway, just for fun. Even if I didn't think that your kid was, you know, extremely adept, it doesn't mean that kids can't be taught. It doesn't mean that they can't work really hard. There are musicians out there who started out with almost no talent, no knowledge, and and they work really, really hard and become something great. I have friends like that. Friends who were told not to sing as a child and it crushed them. And so they decided they were going to kick some butt in their 30s and take voice lessons. And now they're performing in church and having a really good time, stuff like that. Gotta be, teachers have a huge responsibility not to make students feel like they don't, like they can't measure up or like they don't have talent or it's just a travesty when that happens. So I think that music needs to be fun no matter what and you need to find the things that the kids are good at. If your kid can't sing a, a note, you better get them some drum lessons. Your kids are going to have a lot of fun with these games and you're going to have a lot of fun getting to know your kids a little bit better and spending this time with them. Thanks for watching Amy Nolte Music. I'll see you next time.